This tutorial explains how to calculate the variance in the R programming language. So without too much talk, let's dive into the R code. In this video, I will show you several examples and all of these examples are based on the data object X that we can create with line two of the code. So if you run this line of code, you can see at the top right of RStudio that a new data object is appearing, which is called X. As you can see, this data object is numeric and it contains several numeric values. Now let's assume that we want to calculate the variance of this vector object. Then we can apply the var function, as you can see in line four of the code. And we need to apply this function to the name of the data object of which we want to calculate the variance. So if you run line four of the code, you can see at the bottom that the value 5.476 is returned. And this value corresponds to the variance of our vector object X. You have to note that this variance is the sample variance. However, it's also possible to calculate the population variance. And this is what I want to show you in the next example, starting in line six of the code. So in order to calculate the population variance, we first need to create our own user defined function, as you can see in lines six to eight. So if you run these lines of code, you can see that at the top right of RStudio, a new function is appearing, which is called varpop. And we can apply this function to our vector object X by running line 10 of the code. And then you can see that the variance is slightly smaller compared to the sample variance, because this time we have calculated the population variance. We can also convert a variance to a standard deviation using the square root function, as you can see in line 12 of the code. So in this line of code, I'm again applying the var function to calculate the sample variance and then I'm applying the square root function to the output of this to convert our variance to the standard deviation. So if you run line 12 of the code, you can see that the value 2.34 is returned and this is the standard deviation of our vector object X. In comparison to that result, we can also apply the SD function to our data object X to get the standard deviation directly from our data object so if we run line 14 of the code, you can see that exactly the same value is returned by the SD function. So this confirms our previous result and shows that this is the standard deviation of our data. That's all I wanted to explain in this video. In case you want to learn more on this topic, you may check out my homepage statisticsglobe.com because on my homepage, I have recently published a tutorial in which I'm explaining the content of this video in some more detail. I will put a link to this tutorial into the description of the video so you can find it there. If you have liked this video or if you have any questions, let me know in the comments section below. I'll try to respond to all comments as soon as I can. Furthermore, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel to get notified about future video releases. I have already published about 500 videos on this channel and I'm releasing new videos on a daily basis. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next video.